All right, good morning. Good evening, good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube, Pastor Dow here. Let me um start this video here this morning trying to do my best to put a defibrillator on our mind and at least make an attempt to appeal to social righteousness and social justice, which should be in each and every last one of us. I want you to listen to me very closely if you can. That, that's providing you don't have a lot of interference running up here. Uh, and don't presume to think that you know what I'm getting ready to say and jump to conclusions or get ahead of me without really truly listening and hearing me out. You know, that's one thing we don't do in this country anymore is we don't have healthy dialogue. What we do is we hear emotions. We hear feelings. We hear the communication of emotions and the communication of feelings. And people have left facts for feelings and emotions. And mind you, emotions and feelings and even communicating from a emotional or a state of feelings leaves you on nothing but a roller coaster to where there's literally no right or no wrong. Everything is subject to the opinion of the individual. Now, we have got to have some type of morality in this country, some way, somehow. And um, there has to be some type of social justice and it has to be legislated by the highest court in the land, which is the court of public opinion. Now, we in this country right here, and let me let me let me get something, I'll be right back. Matter of fact, I want you I want you to listen to this. I went in um, the kitchen for a second because I realized that I have something in my hand. All right, won't you listen to me very close? Look at this. Look at this. This is a worthless piece of paper. It's called a Federal Reserve note. And what does it say right above that one? Notice one big, gigantic one. It says, In God we trust. Now, the question is, is whenever we see that slogan, in God we trust, what God are we talking about? Because God is this, I don't know, fictitious entity or whatever people want it to be. When you say, in God we trust. I mean, we say one nation under, under God. Are we talking about? The God of this Bible, the God of the scriptures right here. Are we talking about this? Or are we talking about um, the God which the Constitution of the United States of America uh, is, is speaking about? Where, you know, founding fathers like uh, Thomas Jefferson and all of them who were deists and had their own form of God um, and their own thought patterns of who God was is God. Every individual mindset and whatever conclusion of righteous that they settle on, who determines what this morality is? I mean, literally, who literally determines this? And who determines literally what's right and what's wrong? I mean, after all, in this country, even still to this day, I assume, I assume, and I'm making the assumption that we're using this book right here, this Bible right here, to determine what morality is. And if we're doing that, and I do get that from the history of the alleged so-called founding fathers that they use the Bible to determine what is right and what is wrong. Okay, so what do we have going on right now? Well, we have a bunch of people with a bunch of gods running around all over the place telling them what's right and what's wrong. Okay, now, we're going to have to, in our own conscience and in our own right, in our own mind, we're going to have to come to an agreement on something. I mean, even when we look at things, we have got to come to a sense of literally what is right and what is wrong. I'm going to continue to keep on saying that. Uh, because, listen, just because something is legal, it does not make it right. I'm going to say it again. Just because something is legal, it does not make it right. I'm going to say it again. Just because something is legal, it does not make it right. And you have to understand, and you, you're going to have to make your own choices and decisions in life. Are you more concerned with being legal or are you more concerned with being righteous? 
Are you more concerned in being lawful or are you more concerned in being right? I mean, we got to make up our minds one way or the other. And, of course, what I've done personally, I've chose to kind of opt out of this system as much as I can possible while navigating within the system uh, very minute and little as I can. Uh, because I realize that anytime I go outside of the gates of this land right here, I'm dealing with a bunch of people who are educated and mindless minions. They have been trained after a system. Notice I'm using the word again. Trained. They haven't used self-autonomy. They have literally been trained. And they assume because of their training that if something is legal, that it makes it right. And so if they are willing to impose their system of so-called justice upon everyone who they consider to be subjects. I got to use that word. Got to use that word. I mean, believe it or not, I realized also that this is very painful what I'm trying to do here this morning because that doesn't mean that everybody is going to use some independent thinking. It doesn't mean that everybody is going to really truly comprehend and understand what I'm saying because it does take research. It, it does. It does take uh, time, energy, and effort to be able to search the things that I'm speaking about. All right, let me give you an example here, okay? Let me pull up the Bible. I'm going to pull up the computer Bible right here, okay? All right? And the computer Bible says uh, in Leviticus 18, verse 2, 22. It says, you shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. You hear that? In other words, this um, alleged in God we trust or the founding fathers, George Washington, all of them who said that the Bible pretty much is the um, law uh, in the Reagan administration, Public Law 97-280, uh, in 1983, you can go on Google it and check it out and say that the Bible is the uh, uh, official law of the land or the religious or what I forget what it is. But anyway, let me, I don't want to try to get out here and use too many sources right now because I'm trying my best to appeal to a righteous conscience over a lawful or legal. Because just because, again, again, just because something is legal does not make it righteous all right so then we we read leviticus um 1822 now let's go to let me turn to leviticus chapter 20 leviticus chapter 20 and then verse 13 it says if a man also lie with mankind as he lied with a woman both of them have committed an abomination and they shall surely be put to death and their blood shall be upon them okay so we have it over here. We have it reiterated um, by Paul in the book of Romans as well as his letters about infeminine and such and such, so forth and so on. Now, it's obvious that the creator universe has not changed his mind. As a matter of fact, if he changed his mind, he would be human like us and he would never be a righteous judge, would he? Well, obvious there's something going on because people have altered and changed morality in this country. And the, the, one of the main sources of people altering and changing morality in this country right now is just so I'm going to be the Supreme Court of the United States of America. All right. Now, according to my understanding, uh, that the court is not there to tell us um, what is right and what is wrong, but they are there to judge the law as it is written and not legislate from the bench. And, of course, what we have a problem right here is that we have... Uh, judges who have become social justice warriors um, and they have imposed the power that has been granted to them not by the people they have they these are not elected officials these are people that come from a selected people who call themselves the house and the sin or whatever it is to get confirmed but they didn't come from the people themselves and it's an appointment a lifetime appointment and they have now exercised this appointment. Of course, all this started with Roe v. Wade. It all started with Roe v. Wade when, you know, um, what's his name? Justice Harry Harry Blackman. Um, Harry, I think it's Harry Blackman during the Nixon administration. Um, he, um, what he did is he used the so-called due process law of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America. Um, 
and he actually struck down and took away from all 50 states uh, the power because it was a 5-4 decision again and he was the deciding vote um, from all 50 states to determine if abortion was going to be legal or not. Now, I just got finished reading you what the Bible says, the scripture says, and whether people want to believe in an eternal most high, the creator or the real true Elohim or Yahweh or God or Yeshua or Yahweh or whatever way that people choose to pronounce his name, the I am, the eternal, um, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the the, the great I, you know, I mean, I, mean, I can go on and on, uh, the righteous judge. Anyway, there is one, the creator of the universe that has not changed his mind regardless of what type of system uh, humanity is trying to impose upon other systems in order to regulate their lives. And we're all going to be judged uh, based on what is right, not what is legal, not what is lawful, based on righteousness. And according to Psalms, righteousness is the law of the creator of the universe who through his prophets have given us his law. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law, or thy Torah, or thy law, is the truth. All right, so when it tells us that mankind shouldn't lie on mankind, that's pretty simple, right? Well, you got courts. Now, the Supreme Court of Land in 2015 turned around and made uh, homosexuality legal. Didn't say it was right. Legal. Now, what you have to do is you have to determine, are you going to live in a society where well, people are going to make laws ruling from the bench in order to try to impose their system, their social system of justice on you. Now, me personally, I chose to get out of the city. And when I made the move to get out of the city, I chose to buy some land to where I can operate on this land, knowing that the supreme law of the universe, the scriptures, is going to regulate my lifestyle. And I'm not concerned with being legal. I'm concerned with being righteous. What is right? Based on what he has already stated. So there's not going to be any sodomites. There's not going to be any homosexuals on this land. Uh, because their laws stop right here on this land. And of course, somebody asked me, well, how do you determine uh, that your law is going to stop right on this land? Number one, because I said so. And then number two, um, I, I've got I got the edge of that sword back there that will... Uh, uh, do the same thing that the police does in this country that will enforce the law on my land, if you understand what I mean. And see, and that's what people have to get to. They have to be able to get to, to the place today to where um, that you're going to be righteous regardless of how bad that this system here in America is going awry and going crazy. Um, it's obvious that there's a such thing as a devil. And it's obvious that killing the innocent unborn children that do not have a voice. It's obvious that there's something sinister and evil about it because even the Bible gives us examples over and over again. Now, I've learned throughout history and research and stuff that abortion is the Democrats' holy grail of justice. It really, truly is. Um, we got bad, 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 bad people in high offices in this land um, in which the people, y'all already beginning to see that um, the only power that you have is the power that you exercise because remember power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You have to be the one to determine within your own self, are you going to be legal or righteous? It's a choice. Whichever way that you decide to lean, the next thing you need to do is just, you know, decide and determine are you going to live or die by that? Me, myself, personally, I choose to live and die by my convictions. They didn't come on my own accord. It came because I learned what is righteous. What are you going to do? I, my suggestion is keep the commandments and live. And get away from even, remember, the, the, the Messiah himself didn't even promise that there would be peace. Everybody's looking for peace, but he never promised peace. If you go over and read Matthew, the 10th chapter, start at verse 30 and read on down, he never promised peace. He always promised a sword. Um, and I realize that people are playing mental gymnastics with your mind to where you pretty much don't know if you're coming or going today. 
Um, but I'll tell you what, you better get educated. You better become informed and you better become very knowledgeable. And when you're doing something, you have to realize that everything that you do, whether you live, choose to believe, whatever it is, and whatever way people choose to try to um, infuse what they believe or their social justice system on, their, on your, impose them on your mind, you better make sure that you choose right because whatever you do is going to echo throughout all of eternity and it's going to determine what your destination is going to be.